Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. For today's video, it will be something new. Uh, something that I've never done on this channel before or anywhere really. So this will be the first time that I review a TV show. I have been receiving uh, plenty of questions and well, requests that I should do a video review on uh, the first three episodes on the Wheel of Time. And you know what? Uh, I posted this on my community tab and a lot of you, the majority of you said yes that I should do it. So because I love TV show, I love manga, I love anime and of course, I love books, but I've never done a review on the TV show before, so I thought I might as well start now. So yeah, this will mostly be a spoiler-free review on the first three episodes of the Wheel of Time TV show adaptation. But first, I need to give a full disclosure that I haven't finished reading the books. For those of you who don't know, I've read the Wheel of Time only until the fourth book. So I've read Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, uh, The Dragon Reborn, and also The Shadow Rising. That's where I stopped. And again, if you don't know about this, I have mixed feelings regarding the books. I actually really enjoyed the first three books, especially The Great Hunt. That was, well, a great book. But somehow, The Shadow Rising, which is often praised to be Robert Jordan's best book in the entire series by a lot of people, is where, well, is where it disappointed me. I think I had too high of an expectation back then. But long story short, at this moment, I'm still not a huge fan of the books. I think it's better to be upfront about this. And so this video review is based on my experience of watching the first three episodes of the Wheel of Time TV adaptation and also of reading the first four books in the series. I will be giving my thoughts on several key points, the first one being the differences and the storyline. So basically, I will be talking about the differences between the books uh, and the TV show and my thoughts on them. And then I will be giving my thoughts on the casting and their performance, and then after that, the production and, well, pretty much the CGI, and finally, the music. So first, on the topic of differences, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of the books and I did come into this show expecting there will be changes. There will be a lot of changes. I mean, it's an adaptation of a 14 book series. 15 books if you count a new spring into it. There are bound to be changes, especially when they said that they're going to adapt the entire series into 8 seasons. That's, yeah, changes are bound to be made. That being said, before watching the TV show, I was actually very positive about this because in my opinion, one of the things in the books that, well, irked me is that I couldn't click with uh, Robert Jordan's over-descriptive writing. That's one of the issues that I had with the books, and of course, uh, my initial expectation for this is that the TV show will definitely fix this. That's my thought. However, I must say that even though I'm not a huge fan of the books, I also must say that the TV show did a lot of quite insane changes. There are significant changes, and if I'm a huge fan of the books, I honestly don't know whether I would be okay with them. I, I don't think I will, because right now, at this moment, although I'm okay with a lot of the changes, but there were some things, there were some changes that definitely didn't really click with me. I don't know how they will pull it off in the long run. For example, Perrin. The biggest one that definitely didn't click with me is Perrin. I honestly don't know where they're going with this. I think the changes they did to Perrin it's a big one. It's a really big one in the first episode. And I am not sure whether this will be okay in the long run or not. But then again, we're only three episodes into the TV show here. So maybe uh, the creators are playing the long game and maybe it will be good in the future, maybe. And another example for the kind of changes I didn't like is the prologue. So the prologue in the eye of the world is honestly one of the best prologue that I've read in fantasy. It was epic, it was incredible. And in this one, it was just cut out like that. It was done in a few sentences. I mean, why? Why? That was one of the best part of the entire book for me. Maybe the best part of the eye of the world. And in addition to this, a lot of information, a lot of information regarding the lore and world building were cut out from the TV show so far. As I said, I wanted the pacing in the TV show to be better than the books, but still, this was simply too fast. Because just within two episodes, the characters already arrived and also left Shadar Logot. That's incredibly fast. I do understand that with TV show adaptation, especially for an epic fantasy novel like this, changes are bound to be made. TV show and novels are two different storytelling medium, and yeah, changes are bound to be made. And it's not like I have major issues with the changes, but also at the same time, I'm not sure whether these changes are actually necessary or not. I think some of them are actually not necessary. If you want to know the list of all the differences between the books and the TV show so far, I highly suggest for you to check out Bookborn channel. She did an incredible job in highlighting all the differences between the books and the TV show so far. And wow, she did it 
insanely fast. I think it's only one day after the TV show come out and he, she already dead all three episodes. It's incredible. <laughs> and onward to the next key point which is uh, casting and performance. Well, I don't have any actual issue with this. I think I only couldn't click with one character so far and this is because of my perception of the book. So the character that I couldn't click as uh, Perrin. At this moment, I still couldn't visualize uh, the actor as Perrin. And why is that? It's not because of his performance. I think his performance is great. But it's because of this cover art of Tower of Midnight. Yeah, I haven't reached this book yet. I haven't read this book. But this cover art, it's how I view Perrin. Yeah, Raymond Swanland, he did such an amazing job on illustrating this cover art. I mean, look at it. This is so stunning. It's so epic. And if I ever get to this book, well, this is one of the reasons of my motivation. I want to read this. I want to find out what happened behind this cover art. So because of this cover art and how frequent I see this everywhere, it's hard for me at this moment to view this actor as parent. At least at this moment. I'm sure that after watching a few more episodes, I think I will warm up to the character. Hopefully. And besides Perrin, I will have to say that I have already warmed up to the characters in the TV show so much faster than I did in the books. Not gonna lie, I, I still haven't warmed up to the characters in the books, pretty much almost all of them. There are only three characters in the books, uh, let's say four. There are only four characters in the books where I found to be most interesting and that's Matt, Lan Manjagoran, Randall Thor, and also Loyal. I like these four characters so far in the books and I think they're really interesting. Of, and of course the villain are very interesting to me as well. But in the books, it took a while for me to really warm up to these characters. I still haven't warmed up to the characters fully. Probably only Lan and Loyal in the books. But in the TV show, I instantly warm up to Matt, Ren, and also Lan, and a lot of the other characters. I think every one of them did a great job, and especially for Matt, this guy is really Matt. He is Matt. I cannot believe that after this season he will be replaced. It's it's such a shame. I really could see this guy playing as Matt, well, forever. <laughs> His performance as Matt is really good and I really hope that the new actor replacing him in the second season and beyond will be able to live up to his uh, performance. I'm really hoping that's the case. For Randall Thor, I found that his character in the TV show is more likable. I know that Rand is a very complex main character. He has a lot of moral conflict. That's kind of understandable because of the internal conflicts that he faced. But in the TV show, I could definitely see myself liking this character so much more faster than I did for the books. And of course, I love Daniel Henney performance as Lan and also Rosamund Pike as Moraine. Logan is performed by Alvaro Morte. Well, Alvaro Morte did a fantastic job in his performance as Professor in Money Heist or La Casa de Papel. I love Professor and Alvaro Morte's performance was one of the highlights of the TV show for me. I cannot wait to see his performance as Login. And now we move on to the next point which is production. So this one, I'm not gonna lie, I have a lot of issues with this. I expected so much more, especially because the budget for each episode and the Wheel of Time, if I'm not mistaken, is $10 million. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money riding on each episode in the Wheel of Time. So why is it that the CGI still looks so bad? Not all the time, but the first episode really, really made me question whether this will succeed or not. I mean, look at the fire that Moraine casted in the first episode. This looks so cheesy. I first saw this fireball in the trailer and I was instantly worried. <laughs> and after watching the TV show, well, I was still worried about this. I mean, the fireball looks so bad. Other than the CGI, I don't have any issue with the uh, setting and the landscape. They are breathtaking. They are beautiful and I love looking at the local and the setting. And also regarding production, I just want to give praises to anyone, I don't know who, whoever did the opening sequence in episode 2 and beyond deserves an award. I mean, that is gorgeous. I cannot skip the opening scene. I cannot skip the opening credit. The music sounds so good, the art looks beautiful, and the channeling was so mesmerizing. I kind of wish that the actual episodes in the TV show would actually have that kind of channeling because that one looks breathtaking. And also speaking of music, I have no complaint on the music. I think the music was incredibly well done. Other than the instruments, uh, there are two songs out in the TV show so far. The first one being uh, the song for Manateran. I love this song. I cannot wait for the full version. Just hearing about 40 seconds of it, I'm already in love with the song. I cannot wait to hear the full version of it. And then the second one is The Man Who Can't Be Moved. 
wait no no that's the script no uh it's the man who the man who can't forget yeah the man who can't forget i i apologize for that yeah those two songs those two songs are really good and in my honest opinion i think lorna balfour did an excellent job on the score i'm sorry if that's the wrong pronunciation of the composer so overall from the first three episodes of the wheel of time i have to say that i liked it some of the changes didn't click with me but overall i'm not too bothered about it but then again something to remember is that i'm not a huge fan of the books yet i think if i was a huge fan of the books i will have more issues with the changes and not gonna lie i think the tv show really made me want to try the books again and yeah i think i will do that i will read uh, fires of heaven and lord of chaos at least those two uh, with the next year and if the rest of the season somehow well somehow they suck more i will have to say that i am usually more patient when it comes to tv show i have watched a lot of tv show where the first season kind of disappointed me or maybe doesn't live up to expectation but the second season and beyond were amazing and constantly gets better and better for example uh, breaking bad yeah when i first watched breaking bad i was so disappointed with the first season i had no idea why it was so widely praised but i still gave it a try again and thankfully i did give that show a try again because breaking bad is one of the greatest show in the history of television in my opinion and i'm not saying that the wheel of time will actually live up to that level of quality but still who knows maybe it will get better in the second season and beyond so yeah that's pretty much it for me today uh, thank you so much for watching my first video review on a tv show ever let me know your thoughts on this review and more importantly please do let me know whether you love the tv show or not i cannot give a conclusion yet right now whether you should read the books or watch the tv show because well there is only three episodes right now i think that's not fair to immediately just say that with the books and in a lot of cases i think well just do both <laughs> i'm not sure yet right now whether i will do another video review on the wheel of time tv show or not maybe i will do another one uh, after the season one ended maybe but as always thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support Bye-bye.